What's going on YouTube family? Welcome back to all the subscribers of this channel. If you're a new viewer to this channel, to this video, welcome to a Shed Sessions video. In Shed Sessions videos, I install parts onto cars. So if you're into that sort of thing, smash the subscribe button because there is plenty of that on this channel. Today's upgrade is extremely exciting. It's part of my journey making my way towards an engine tune. Basically what that is, is the car will go onto a dyno and someone will plug into the ECU, the brain of the engine tells it what to do and tunes it and tells it what to do even better. To do that though, I need to make sure that I get all of my ducks in a row and get all of the engine upgrades done before I do the engine tune. Things like air intake, you know, upgraded air box, better than the factory on, better airflow, exhaust for better exhaust emission escape and intercooler for air intake temperatures. The kit that we're going to be installing today is the CRG diesel tuning intercooler upgrade package. This comes with everything you need to bolt it straight into your MP300 guys. This kit is really refined. The R&D they have put into this product is huge. They've done a lot of work to make sure that this is a very refined kit, looks good, performs well and is easy to install. Let's start by having a chat about what an intercooler actually does. Now, a variety of four-wheel drives will come out with turbochargers, so this information will be pretty much the same for most applications. They don't really change for air-to-air -air intercooled engines. So what happens, guys, is the air is sucked in through the intake. Now, that doesn't matter if it's factory intake or a snorkel upgrade, it all goes in through the same way and gets sucked down into the air box, which is your filtration. It's the first point of filtration for your engine and the one that is most important because from there, it travels out of the airbox and into your first turbocharger, a very part, important part of the engine. Filtration is key. So, travels into the first turbocharger, which is a large turbo, and that is a low pressure turbo. It gets compressed, the air gets compressed in there and then travels into the high pressure, smaller turbo behind it, okay? Then goes out through the hot pipe up the top. You'll be able to see that from the top of your engine and travels down the hot pipe into the hot side of your front mounted intercooler, the factory intercooler on your Nissan MP300. Inside the intercooler, the fins cool down that compressed air. It's been compressed by those turbos. It's hot, guys. It's definitely going to need cooling down. That's why you've got an intercooler there. And then from there, it travels through the other side of the intercooler. That's the cold side. So it exits out there and goes to the intake of the engine. And that's what the engine receives. That's the air that it receives to breathe and do the combustion that creates power for your vehicle. And then after it's done its combustion and it needs to get rid of all of those exhaust emissions and gases, it travels out through the manifold and out your exhaust, which is also equally important to be performing well. So that's exactly what we're trying to achieve here today. We're going to get better performance from the upgraded intercooler system we're going to install and remove those heat soak factors and just simply the crappy position of the factory Nissan intercooler. And I'll get more into that when we start looking at that on the vehicle. Let's get stuck into the unboxing of the product and show you what you get for your money. Then we'll get stuck into the installation of the product onto the vehicle, guys. So let's take a look at what is included in the box from CRG Diesel Tuning. Lots of packaging. First thing on top, is some pipe work. Now, these are very, very well made. They've actually got CNC machine tops on them, ready to clip straight into the factory pipes. Okay, I'm gonna need a knife. You gotta love a bit of bubble wrap around the important stuff. So, we've got some really nice bracketry here, all aluminium as well, so it's the same material that everything else is made out of, so it's good to continue that through this bracketry. And I'm guessing these big buggers are going to be the brackets to actually mount the intercooler into place. We've got some nunchucks. No, but really, they're not nunchucks. And if they were, I wouldn't know how to use them anyway. So we've got some joiners here, one joiner. And it looks like we've got here a reducer joiner and a couple of clamps, one smaller than the other. So it looks like these are marine grade stainless high grip worm drive clamp. So that's really good to see. Marine grade stainless, it is important. We don't want anything underneath the car copping any rust and then rusting onto these components. That's not what we want. Yes. The most important part of this kit and it looks good. It looks really good. Ooh, ooh. 
So as you can see, there's not just uh, outlets coming off here, which we have to put joiners onto and all of that ugly looking stuff. These are some really nice welded aluminum pipes to the bottom of the intercooler outlets and inlets, uh, and they're bent in orientation to suit your vehicle. The intercooler itself has custom tanks on either side. Now, these are welded onto a core, an intercooler core right here. This is a PWR Australian made intercooler core. What we're working with here is something that has been specifically designed for our Navaras with a factory like fitment whilst out and out trumping the performance and strength of the factory intercooler in our NAVs. And of course, you're not just limited to one style intercooler kit. CRG has actually designed two different core options for us four-wheel drive enthusiasts to choose from. This one right here is the Street Series Aero 2 bar and plate style core, a very strong, efficient cooling upgrade for our rigs. But if you want to push your air intake temperatures down even further, you can upgrade your CRG kit to the PWR Race Series Tube and Fin Core. With a rate reduction of 60% over the Street Series intercooler, this racer design allows for a more efficient cooling as the tube and fin design disperses heat more efficiently. For most four-wheel drive enthusiasts, the Street Series core is a worthy upgrade that will see your rig's air intake temps much happier than a factory setup. Rightio, it is time to now chuck those parts in the vehicle. So the intercooler itself goes right here. Well, not right here, but in behind the grill. So we need to remove that grill out of the way so that we can get the intercooler into position. The grill is removed by undoing these plastic clips on the top, so there's four of them. Uh, two there, and then two on this side. Then there's some cheeky buggers hiding in the outside of your grill, which you just need to get a screwdriver in there and twist those around and pull them out, and uh, then you'll be able to remove the grill out of the way and gain access to that area. Behind these bash plates is the factory intercooler tucked up inside here. So it's not only low in the vehicle, which puts it in the way of all the mud and crap that we put our cars through when we fall or drive them, and it gets stuck in the cooling fins and therefore decreases the efficiency of the cooler, but it's also blocked by all of these bash plates and things down here. There's, there's really limited airflow into this area. Now I know they've got some cut out holes in here to try and help, but realistically, when you're up at speeds, the air's just going to hit this and deflect this way. It's not going to find its way into these holes very easily. Now I've got the factory bash plate right here and I've got an Iron Man bash plate as well It's part of my bull bar. I'll need to remove both of them. If you've got anything in this area, do the same thing. Now I've got 18,000 Ks on my MP300, not many kilometers at all. I haven't done any mud work really with this vehicle yet. I haven't put it through any decent mud holes or anything like that. So there's not a lot of mud jammed up in there, but if you have, I'm sure you'll find some and it'll probably fall over your face as you're removing those bash plates anyway. There's a couple of factory clips we need to undo and some pipes we need to remove and some bolts to drop this out of the way. So let's get stuck into doing that first. Okay guys, so we're at the back of the intercooler here, there's this plastic shield on it and at the middle of the shield, there's a bolt right there. And then we can get stuck into removing these shields on the outside of the intercooler. These help guide the air into the factory cooler. And there's one on each side. They've just got some plastic clips on them. One on the top, one on the bottom right there. Exactly the same style clips as you uh, remove to get the grill out. So there's two pipes that need to be removed in total. I'll show you how to remove this one. And that way you can go and do the exact same thing on the other side of the vehicle. So first things first guys, get yourself a flat blade screwdriver. There's a plastic retaining clip that you need to break in order to get the metal clips off, okay? Same thing on the other side of the vehicle. So just pry that plastic clip until you hear it crack open. Okay, once you've got that plastic clip off guys, there is just a metal snap ring, which is around this clamp. So just undo that by prying it open. So the factory intercooler has two mounting locations. One at the bottom here, and one up the top there. Both of them are leading onto this one main bracket right here, and that bracket has two bolts in it, which bolts straight into the chassis. So if you remove those two bolts, that should drop the whole intercooler out as one piece and remove this redundant bracket. Sweet as guys, that is the factory intercooler. Now removed, there's the two remaining pipes right there. So as you guys can see, there's a bit of oil dripping out of these pipes. So that is going straight into the intake of my engine and into the engine, essentially. And this is exactly what an oil catch can will prevent from happening. So I think looking at that, that is quite a substantial amount of oil that is going into the intake 
and I've only got 18,000 Ks on this engine. So I think it might be time to consider looking at a oil catch can kit for my car. Okay, so we're back up to the top portion of this installation. We're in behind the grill area. So there's some cooling pipes in here, some pipe work which we need to push back and reorientate in order to get room for the intercooler to squeeze into this location. We actually need to get them behind this support bracket right here. So to start off, we're gonna remove all the plastic clips which are holding these down, including the two pumps here. We need to remove them off these brackets. Now, yours may look slightly different to this, your setup. I've got an Ironman bull bar installed on my vehicle, so some of this has changed from factory already. So if it looks a little bit different, the procedure is still the same. You just need to remove all the plastic clips that are holding it down, getting it ready to push it back behind this plate. Okay, so that's one of the pumps now done. So it's got these metal little locating lugs on the bottom, which fall into there. And on the bottom of those, these little clips, I actually just got a flat blade screwdriver in the end and pulled them forward and they both came undone, no worries at all. So I don't know if there's a better way to remove these clips, but uh, that's how I got them off and they seem to come off pretty easily doing that. That is all the pipe work now taken care of. Those EGR pumps are removed off their brackets, removing those clips, no problems at all. So that's ready to put behind this bracket once we remove it. So to remove this bracket, it's two 12 mil bolts, two right there, and then there's two 12 mil nuts down the bottom. So we need to get those ones out. We also need to get off the bonnet latch assembly, this one here. The only reason we're removing this one is because it's got this uh, deadly contraption right here, which is poking out and is going to poke some fins out in the intercooler when you try and install it. So there's one 12 mil bolt there and one on the other side. Just remove those and it'll all come away. Now with this bracket loose and everything out of the way, we can grab this pipe and simply just lift it over the top of that bracket and rest it in behind there. And just so we know what we're working with roughly, we can grab a bolt and just loosely fit it back into this bracket. And that way we can kind of see what we're working with. So you might find that your pump can just go straight back onto the factory bracket location if you have a series one or series two model MP300 because the brackets are sat further back. Now my model MP300 is a series three and you can see these brackets are sat further forward which will mean that this pump and everything will come in contact with the intercooler. So we need to get it sitting further back. So anything that's a series three or newer, you need to grab one of the two brackets in your kit from CRG and simply just relocate the pump by bolting this onto the factory bracket hole locations and then putting the pump into the ones at the back and do that for both sides of the vehicle. So I can see that this hose right here is rubbing slightly on the back of this bracket. So what I'm going to do is get a pair of pliers and just grab these clamps on these hoses, pull them together and just twist these around so that it sort of pushes it back away from this bracket. You don't have to completely remove these clamps, you can just loosen them and twist as you're loosening. Uh, this one over here as well, I think I might adjust this slightly and just twist this one, push it back closer to the radiator side of things and just try and give myself as much room in the intercooler area as possible. Okay, so we also have this little sensor just down here. It's got a 10 millimeter bolt holding into place. Now, one of the intercooler pipes going down this way is going to run straight into it. So we basically need to undo it and just flip it around 180 degrees. So for any of you guys that don't think I hit a snag or two when I'm doing these installs, here is a good example of me just about to figure out that uh, my winch clutch lever is going to foul on the intercooler. So I just had to rotate my uh, clutch housing on my winch, just rotate it down so that the lever was now in a new position which would allow me to clear the new intercooler. So things don't always go to plan guys and it may be the same for your install. You might find there's something that you've installed on the vehicle that uh, is now causing you issues with your new intercooler installation, but it's just about finding a way to overcome the obstacle, guys. It's never impossible, you just have to work around it. Moving on, it's now sitting in there, well, kind of sitting in there anyway. So I've got it resting on the bracket down the bottom. When I move this backwards and put it into kind of the position that it will be sitting into, you can see there's still heaps of clearance on all of those pipes and everything back here, which is exactly what you need to check, guys. I know it's exciting, I'm excited. I wanna get this thing bolted up, but you need to make sure that you have clearance on everything. And that goes to the pipes going down the bottom there, the hot and cold pipes as well. These are the brackets which we need to put on in order to hold the intercooler into place. So you got left and right on the driver's side here, you've got a 12 millimeter nut and a 10 millimeter bolt. You need to remove those and put the bracket through there and that bolts that in. And on the passenger side, you've got two 10 millimeter bolts on there, which you need to remove, and that bolts the bigger bracket in. Now that you're confident you've got clearance for your intercooler and you're not going to have any problems with it rubbing on anything, 
go ahead and chuck your bonnet latch assembly back on. So there's three bolts. Now the one at the bottom is a lot easier to get to when the intercooler is leaning forward. So that's why we're doing it now. And then go ahead and get the uh, get the brackets on for the intercooler. Now, I showed you what those bolts were before, so go ahead and put those into that location. Now you don't need to do these up tight just yet. We're going to leave all of the intercooler assembly bolts loose for the moment so that we can wiggle it around if needed to get movement for maybe fitting pipes underneath and things like that. So we'll go through once we've 100% finished the setup and do up all of these bolts then. So anyone that has a bull bar installed on their MP300, listen up, this is for you. This pipe right here comes very close to this bracket. I've got plenty of room in here, but say for instance, an OEM Nissan bull bar might not. This bracket might be really close to this pipe and have, uh, have a high chance of rubbing, which you don't want. You need to get clearance here. So if yours is close, you need to either readjust your intercooler, wiggle it around and see if you've got enough movement to get this away with enough clearance to put your finger in and some, or you need to linish this bracket back. Otherwise it's going to rub and it's gonna cause you issues. So just make sure you check that. I've got plenty of clearance on both sides. As you can see, there's the other side there, guys. So as you can see, the position of this intercooler has been really well thought out. So there's the radiator, and then you've got your condenser in front of that. And if you've got an automatic transmission, you have your automatic transmission cooler in front of that. And then you've got your intercooler right here. So you've got to think about this. They've placed all of these components here for good airflow because it's got the best airflow coming from this way of the vehicle. So everything's been forced in through the intercooler now goes through the intercooler, then through all the other coolers behind it. And you know what, guys? Some people put fans on these intercoolers now, chuck a couple of electric fans on there. It is not needed. It is not needed at all. I know that you guys have been full driving before and you've heard your engine-driven fan kick in. That thing is loud and you can feel and hear that that thing is working. So if anything starts getting warm, that engine-driven fan is gonna be sucking so much air through here and through the intercooler. You don't need electric fans on there when you're full driving low range, guys. It's just a waste of time. Don't put electric fans on, it does not need it. You've done enough by putting it up into the proper position that it need to be from factory. So we need to give this pipe right here some support. It was mounted to the plastic shielding on the back of the factory intercooler, but obviously has nothing to mount to now that's gone. So we're going to pick up on this factory 10 millimeter bolt right here, and then we're going to reuse the bolt that we took out of this on the plastic shielding. And you're going to grab the last bracket in your intercooler kit. And we're going to put that between there and there. So guys, we're at the last piece of this intercooler puzzle. We need to prepare the pipe work to go back onto the vehicle to connect the OEM hot and cold pipe up to the intercooler piping. Now this one right here, the smaller one is the hot side. So that's the driver's side. And then you've got the cold side going to your engine's intake, the passenger side, the bigger one right there. So you've got two joiners, these ones here. Now this one uh, is a reducer joiner, okay? So that's for the hot side, driver side. And then you've just got the straight through joiner for the passenger side. You may have noticed that there are some O-ring seals connected or taped to each one of the pipes, so the hot and cold pipes. They are different sizes as well, so don't get them mixed up, one smaller than the other. It's awesome that Chris has supplied these seals to replace the OEM seals that are in the pipes because we all know that those leak. So they do have oil leaking issues out of those seals from factory, so these are an upgrade which Chris has thrown in as part of the intercooler kit. So, grab your reducer, and pop it onto this pipe, push it all the way down, and then grab that clamp. We can just do these up slightly for now. Don't have to do them up all the way just yet. We do want to be able to um, shuffle them around, change the orientation if we need to. Okay, that's one done. All right, that's both the pipes prepped, ready to go onto the car. So let's go ahead and get these seals in place of the OEM seals to start off with, and then we'll chuck these pipes on. So it's probably pretty hard to see, but there is a lip seal just inside here. Okay, it's the same on both sides. I've got a flat blade screwdriver. I'm just going to get underneath it, lift it up, and just kind of hook it out. Now we need to replace this with the one that CRG have supplied. Now this is the cold side, so it will be the bigger of the brown O-rings. So we've got our replacement O-ring there. I've just put some rubber grease on it, and you just pop it into exactly the same groove that you removed the factory one from. Okay, and all you need to do is go ahead and do the same thing on the other side of the vehicle, on the hot pipe side, 
take that o-ring seal out replace it with the new one and replace the clips as well if you took them off like me put the clips back on and we're ready to go to put the pipes back on and finish off this install and i've also just put some rubber grease on the end there just to try and help with the installation into the oem pipe because it can be a little bit tricky so just a smear of rubber grease around the outside of both that and the o-ring inside there will definitely help out so we'll go ahead and try and get that side in first And we'll join up the rubber joiner to the intercooler pipe work. Okay, so I'm stoked with that fitment, guys. That's not uh, under any tension. It's sitting there nice and freely. I've pushed these both in as far as they can comfortably go. Now, when you do up the clamps, just make sure that they're done up against the bead of the pipe on both sides. It'll give this clamp something to rest against. It means it's got less chance of wiggling loose. Now, just one more thing I'd like to note. On this side up here, guys, you do have an AC pump, and it is quite close to the OEM pipe. So if you have the orientation of this pipe twisted around a little bit, it could push into that AC pump. So just make sure you check that clearance between that pump and the OEM pipe to make sure it's not going to rub or it is rubbing. If it is, just change the orientation of this pipe and you'll be good to go. Just make sure when you're putting those joiners on guys, the material on the joiner is even on each of the pipes. You don't wanna be favoring one pipe more than the other. Otherwise you could run the risk of it uh, blowing off basically. So yeah, just make sure of that. And also just make sure that your clamps are firmly clamped down. Uh, so what I mean by that is make sure when you run your finger over it, you can feel a bit of a groove where the clamp is molding into the joiner. If you don't feel that groove, you need to go a little bit tighter. That's pretty much it underneath here. Just run through, make sure it's not rubbing on anything as per usual. And just make sure that they've clipped firmly into the OEM hot and cold pipes. Check this thing out. That looks so good in there, guys. So that's the bottom now taken care of. Everything's back together. Now we've just got to finish off the top. So the intercooler is in place, but I do have to level it out. You can see that it's dropping down the passenger side just a little bit. So just use the loose brackets to level everything off. And when you're happy, tighten everything down. Now there is nine nuts and bolts in total. So there's the bottom bracket, and then there's the two top brackets here. Now I reckon that center really needs to get cut out now, guys. I need to put some mesh in place of that factory grill assembly really need to show off that crg bling we can't hide it i might even relocate this sucker down inside the bull bar at some point as well that is an awesome bit of gear the crg intercooler kit is done and dusted that installation was super straightforward i hope this video showed you guys how to install a crg kit into your vehicle and the importance of why you need to do an upgraded intercooler kit in any vehicle but especially the mp300s now i couldn't put my grill back in because i just had to have it exposed and so you can see it for the outro of this video. I need to cut my grill out and put some mesh in there so you can see this blingy bit of gear because it really does look that good. It's so sad that I have to put the grill on later and hide this thing. It's pretty obvious where you get it from, but in case you don't know, you can jump on CRG's website or give those guys a call in the office and uh, grab one of these kits for yourselves. They have a few different options there, guys, and they do a bunch of different gear anyway. I've got a few other bits and pieces that I'll probably grab from them in the future but this is definitely a good place to start. And as I said, if you don't want to install this yourself, they might have someone else, you know, that can install it for you if you're not in Queensland where they're located. I'm sure they have other fitters around Australia. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Another thing you can do for me if you really enjoy my content is share this video on social media. You can share it to Facebook, you can share it to Instagram, you can do whatever you want. You can share the link anywhere, guys. It helps me out get more people into this video and shows more people all these awesome upgrades that we can do for our cars. Thanks for stopping by. I'll catch you in the next video.